Hey friends all over the world. I want to come to you and address something that I'm very concerned about. I've made a lot of videos in the past. I've talked about a lot of different issues, but I hope that I can articulate this the way um, it requires. There is something happening in our culture that I believe is, is extremely diabolical, extremely insidious, destructive. And, I, and I'm concerned that even many of you watching me are not necessarily aware of the implications of this. Um, and I want to, and I'm going to say a lot of things that may be offensive. I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm going to say some things that uh, may be difficult for you to accept, or maybe you don't agree with them. I'm not sure, but but I'm going to say them because I, I feel like it needs to be said. And I want to talk about censorship and cancel culture. Censorship and cancel culture. And I'm going to deal with society as a whole, then I'm going to deal more specifically with the church. And I could really do it the other way around, but I'll, I'll do it in that order. You know, we're living in a time where what you think is being policed. Not, not even what you do. Your thoughts are being policed. We are living in the throes of 1984. You know, the, you know, the book 1984, we're living in the time where where everybody is being forced or there is an attempt to force everyone to think the same way. And if you don't think like like they want you to think, then you're you're punished. There there are rep, uh, repercussions for your disobedience, if you will. Or repercussions for your your divergence. This is really serious. I mean, the, the, the level of censorship. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that, that I would ask, right? Here, here's what I would ask. At what point... You know, in a, in a society where we are supposed to be tolerant, we are supposed to be accepting of everyone else's beliefs, at what point do my beliefs matter? Does what I believe matter? Do my beliefs matter? You know... This is a serious question. Do my belief, do do my convictions matter? Do uh, do we do we factor those in anymore? You know, for example, you know uh, when we talk about uh, uh, lifestyles and people living what would be considered alternative lifestyles, or etc. Right. So, so religion is a protected category. So why is it that if somebody has a belief in step or in line with their religious convictions that differs from what somebody else wants to do, why is that person not considered? Why is my religious conviction not factored into the narrative? So a person, an atheist has rights, but how come a theist or a believer in God doesn't have rights? It just is really twisted. And nowadays, you know, there was a time when if somebody did or said something wrong, um, you know, they were given an opportunity to correct their behavior. Now we don't give people an opportunity to correct their behavior. We just cancel them. You're canceled. If you said something wrong, you're canceled. I mean, I have heard of recent instances where people um, said, made a comment that was not even 
a serious comment and was not even racially motivated, but because of, of how it was perceived, people were fired on the spot. Fired on the spot. Yet we have politicians with a history of corruption and lying and deceiving, and they're still employed. They still have a job. Don't you see that something is wrong with this? Don't, it's, it, listen, something's wrong with this, beloved. This is wrong. This is wrong. Now, I'm going to get into something that, that this is really going to get you twisted into a knot. Not only is the cancel culture in the society, but it's in the church. Where we have, listen, I heard about this recently. There's apparently this, this campaign now to get prophets or people that deem themselves prophets to not only apologize, but to say that they're not going to prophesy anymore on these political issues. The audacity, like, I, I, I'm not trying to be funny, and this is with all due respect, but who gives someone the right to police everybody else? Who, who gives you the right to police everyone else? We have prophetic police now. People that feel like it's their calling given them by God, even though they don't prophesy at all, they've never written on prophecy, they don't have any authority on prophecy, Yet they've made themselves the authority on prophecy. And guess what? If you said something that, that is not right, you know, here, sign this document that you're never going to. This is control. It's control. It's manipulation. I don't care what you say. I don't care who's doing it. I don't care who's doing it. I don't care who's doing it or what's in front of your name. It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. And we want to. We wonder why. We wonder why there's so much cancel culture in the culture because there's cancel culture in the church. In fact, I would argue that the church has taught cancel culture. We've taught cancel culture. If somebody has a problem or somebody makes a mistake. We, we demand that their life and ministry is over. You can never preach again. You can never do this. And I think that there are instances where that is appropriate. But a lot of times we do this even though our own hands are dirty. It is, there's so much hypocrisy in this. There's so much hypocrisy in this. So much self-righteousness in this. The, the, the fact that, you know, we, hey, you, you said something that we don't agree with, so we're going to cancel you. you, you, you you're gonna, we're going to cancel you. We're canceling people's ministries. We're, we're shutting down people, demanding that people. I've heard other ministers get up and say, if somebody prophesied that Trump would win and it didn't happen, leave their church. I've heard pastors say it from the pulpit. If, if somebody prophesied that Trump won, leave their church. Evangelical pastors. Pentecostal pastors. Liberal pastors. Oh, oh. And some of these same pastors have children out of wetlock that the church doesn't even know about, and they're still preaching. How crazy is this? How crazy is this? This is insane. I'm sorry. Please forgive my language. But we got to stop this. We got to stop this. You, somebody says to me, oh, there's a document floating around that, that uh, prophets have to sign this document saying that, that they are not going to, that first of all, if they give a word, the word needs to be scrutinized by this group of people and that, 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 that if they have prophesied erroneously, they need to apologize. 
And not only that, but that, you know, they will no longer prophesy on politics in the future. This is crazy, church. And we got to stop this. Stop it. It's wrong. It's flesh. I don't care how they, I don't care how they try to disguise this. I don't care how they try to dress this up. I don't care what, the, what kind of jargon they use to justify this. It is wrong. It's wrong. We have 12,000 different denominations and the church hasn't even been able to get themselves together and we want to get everybody else together. You can't even control your own constituents and you want to control people that you have no authority over? This is, this is not correct. Who's going to say something about this? Who's going to keep it real? Has the church descended into such apathy that we're sitting back and we think this is okay what will it be next oh make sure that your sermons were pre-approved by me make sure that the books that you write also go through me this is crazy this is a Jezebel spirit it's pride it's arrogance now hear this if, if you want to have a conversation with someone and correct them privately, that's one thing. If you want to express your grievances with what people are doing, that, that, that's one thing. If you want to even say, hey, as a, as a leader in the body, I want to say that this is my position on this, that's, a, that's one thing. But to make yourself an authority in an area that really there's no evidence that you're an authority there, to me, is totally hypocritical. This Judaizer spirit in the church, control, censorship, manipulation, I'm going to shut you down and I'm going to, you can't shut anybody down. <laughs> How are you going to shut somebody? So, so this is what we've come to cancel culture in the church. We're going to shut you down. You can't prophesy. You can't say this and say that. It is censorship culture. And we don't even realize that it has infected, not even affected, I chose my word correctly, infected the body. It's an infection. It's an infection. And this is not just, you know, with the whole uh, political prophecies, but it also goes into uh, just in general. You know, I, I've heard stories, so many stories. Pastors, if they don't like somebody, they'll call somebody and say, hey, don't have this person in your church. You know, not because the person is an unrepentant sin. Now that's that's one thing. If somebody's an unrepentant sinner and they uh, you know, they're they're the unrepentant sinner and they're uh, living a lascivious or lawless lifestyle and they refuse to repent. That's one thing. I think that the Bible tells us in Matthew 18, it gives us protocol. And after somebody won't receive correction, it says, treat the person like an unbeliever, an infidel, a heretic. So that there's a place for church correction. But I'm talking about just because you don't like someone, just because you don't like what somebody said, or you don't like, I've had people tell me, I don't like the fact that you wear shades when you do live videos. So I'm, I'm going to unfollow you. Something's wrong with you. Something is wrong in your soul and you need to get delivered. If, if this is where we've come to, where we're that manipulative and that controlling to where we have to control what everybody around us does and thinks and says, you can't control what I say. You can't even control what you say. You don't even have self-control half the time. How are you going to control other people? You don't even have self-control. You're going to control others? What is happening here? What is happening? The devil is a liar. We cannot bow to this Nazi spirit in the body of Christ. We cannot continue to bow to this. We cannot continue to yield to this spirit. It's in the culture. 
It's in the culture. Anything you say, you're deemed a bigot, homophobic, a racist, you know, sexist. We throw terms around in an attempt to manipulate people. We even throw the word heretic. Oh, this person's a heretic. You know what a heretic is? We use these words so loosely and so irresponsibly that it has become a danger to the body and a danger to society. This is manipulation. They're trying to manipulate you. I can't even, I can't even uh, 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 have convictions of right and wrong anymore without being deemed hateful. No, I just believe that you're wrong. I can agree to, to disagree with you. We can agree to disagree and still walk in love toward one another. I don't have to hate you. I just disagree with the way you live your life. I disagree with what you said. How come disagreement has to become dishonor and disrespect and demeaning and destruction? Hear what I'm saying? Disagreement does not have to mean destruction or even disengagement. Yet we are creating a trend, not only in the culture, but in the church of control, of manipulation. People are being fired from their jobs over stuff that, that, that many times they're not even guilty of. Why don't I have the right to teach my kids the Bible? And, and, and insist that my children live according to the Bible. Why do you have to force things on my children that don't line up with our religious beliefs? And yet you tell me to respect other people's beliefs. A guy can wear heels and, and pumps with a full beard, and I can't say anything about that. But if I say I want to pray in school, I'm offensive. This is not right. I don't care if Facebook takes this down. I don't care if they take it down. I'm telling the truth. We got to stand up to this. I've just had enough of it. We got to stand up. If we don't stand up and fight, our children will suffer the consequences of our apathy. If we don't stand up and be willing to pay the price and be willing to risk it all, then our children's children, if the Lord tarry, will suffer the consequences of our inaction. Evil proliferates when good men and women do nothing. Please share this.